friction. So our goals today are, we'll look at how we handle friction with a relatively simple model. We'll distinguish between kinetic friction and static friction, and our third goal, to look at the effect of contact area in our simple model of friction. So friction arises when there is contact between two objects. A normal force is one component of that contact force. It's the component perpendicular to the interface. The frictional force is the other component. It acts parallel to the interface between objects. Many people think that friction tends to oppose motion, but it's very important to think that friction tends to oppose any relative motion between objects or between surfaces in contact. If there is relative motion, the frictional force is the kinetic force of friction. If there is no relative motion and there is a frictional force, then the frictional force is the static force of friction. So, although it sounds like something moving is more complicated than something being at rest, we're going to start with kinetic friction where there is relative motion between surfaces in contact. And it really is easier to deal with than static friction. It's Static friction is much less intuitive. Okay, so let's imagine you are pushing a book across the table. So, if the book is at rest on the table, you have that relatively simple free body diagram, a normal force up, balancing force of gravity, mg, down. If you set the book into motion, the book is moving to the right, then the kinetic friction force acts to the left. I think that's fairly intuitive. And what does that do? It slows the book down and brings it to rest. So in our simple model, the kinetic force of friction Fk is proportional to the normal force. We say Fk is mu k Fn. So mu there is the, sim is the Greek letter mu. Um, mu k is known as the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, it's the ratio. Another way to write that is mu k is fk over fn. It's the ratio of forces, so it doesn't have any units of its own. It's dimensionless. And the value of it depends on the two surfaces in contact. Okay, steel on steel has a particular value of the coefficient of kinetic friction. Steel on wood has a different value. So it depends on those two surfaces. Typical values might be between 0.1 and 1, but you can get lower values or even higher values than that. Okay, static friction, again, as we said, it can be less intuitive, so you can be a little more careful. Okay, so consider a book at rest on a flat table where the static friction force is zero. Okay, there's our free body diagram again, normal force opposing the force of gravity. If you then push or pull on that book, static friction, its job is to prevent motion. Its job is to keep the book at rest. So if you push with a little force F to the right, then the static friction force, if it can, goes to the same value to the left. Then the net force is zero. If you don't push at all, that friction force goes away. If you push harder, then the friction force gets larger, and of course, eventually you can push hard enough to move the thing, to move the book. So there is a limit, an upper limit, to that static friction force. We'll call it Fs max. Okay, so the force of static friction matches the force that you apply in the opposite direction until your force exceeds the maximum force of friction, and then the book moves, and then of course we'll switch over to kinetic friction again. Okay, so the maximum possible force of static friction is given by a similar equation to the kinetic friction equation. This is Fs max is mu s Fn. Mu s here is the coefficient of static friction. Mu s in general is bigger than the kinetic coefficient of friction. In other words, you've probably all, all experienced this, it's harder to start something moving than it is to keep it going once it is moving. That's consistent with mu s being larger than mu k. Okay, and there's the corresponding picture for the book moving, and you can see that Fk is less than 
F as max. Okay, so static friction can be difficult to deal with because we have this less than or equal to sign. Fs in general is less than or equal to F, mu s fn. It's only f as max, which is equal to mu s times fn. So we will often deal with a limiting case. So if we say the maximum force you can apply to this book before it starts moving is whatever, then you know what to use for fs max. But there'll be lots of cases we deal with where we just say, hey, we push on the book with some force, 5 newtons, the book doesn't move, then you have no idea whether it's the limiting force, the maximum force of static friction. So that could well be Fs less than mu s Fn. Okay, and there's a picture corresponding to that. The smaller force you apply to the right, Fs is also smaller to the left. Okay, so be careful of static friction. How does contact area affect friction? Well, let's consider this. A particular box re resting on the bottom surface, and I need to exert a force of 12 newtons horizontally to get to move. If the box rests on its side, the side has a smaller area than the bottom, the force I must exert to move the box is larger than 12, 12, or smaller than 12. Well, in our simple model, Fs max is mu s times the normal force. We haven't changed the normal force. We haven't changed the type of surfaces in contact, so the mu hasn't changed. So the force of friction doesn't change. Okay? So if you view this under a microscope, what happens there is even if you have large areas which you look to be touching, they're only actually touching in very a small, a small number of places. Okay? So when they try to move past each other, the, the kind of peaks on each surface get stuck on one another. If you change the area, reduce the area, normal for force stays the same, but what changes? Well, what changes is that you increase the pressure, you're pushing the surfaces closer together, and so the area's gone down, but now you've got more peaks that will touch when you try and move the surfaces past one another, and those effects roughly balance out, keeping the friction about the same. Again, that's our fairly simple model of friction. It's not always that simple. Okay, and that's a good introduction to friction.